I'm going to give you my proprietary simulation projected win for the four biggest college football games this Saturday, along with free plays in all four games. That's coming up in just a moment. Hi, I'm Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV, and this is your weekly college football top 25 report. We have three huge top 25 matchups, and then a bonus game, a game that was just a bit outside for making the top 25 as well. So four huge games, including two of the biggest games this season, Alabama, Tennessee, and of course, we've also got Georgia, Texas. Those are coming up, along with two other games for you. I'm going to let you know how to play these games, make some money, and I'm going to give you my 10,000 game simulation in each and every one of them. Let's get to it. First, let's start with the first game at 3.30 Eastern on Saturday. And this is one of those big games. Alabama against Tennessee. This could very well be a loser-leave-the-national-title-picture game. Loser-leave-town, perhaps, because both teams do have a loss. And one team will have a second loss after this weekend. It's number 7, Alabama, is a three-point favorite at number 11, Tennessee. 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Let's start with the simulation. 10,000 games run through my database model each and every week for every FBS game on the board. And on average, I've got this game a tie. So maybe a team won't have a second loss. Well, they play overtime now, so they will. But once again, I make this game a pick em, And the current line is Alabama minus three. That's actually exactly where the line was four months ago in June when the Circa in Las Vegas came out with advanced numbers. They had Bama minus three. A couple weeks ago, this line would have been a lot lower, but now Tennessee has a loss as well. A couple back-to-back lackluster performances, and it's right back where it started four months ago. Alabama minus three. I project to pick them, and I like Tennessee not only because of the line value, but also because of the situational setup and the handicap itself in this game. First of all, Alabama's been a weaker road team the past few seasons, and under Nick Saban, that was definitely the case. Well, Kalen DeBoer's back in the picture now as the new head coach. But DeBoer's teams are also a little weak at Washington as road favorites, especially his first season at Washington two years ago. They lost each of their first two road games outright as 3-13 and 13 point favorites. In fact, they went 0-3 their first three games on the road against the spread. Now, I know that's not the case with Alabama as they had a nice win at, Mich- uh, at Wisconsin last month. But keep in mind, they've been sluggish in some games since. In fact, the Georgia game, while impressive start there, they did have a 4-1 turnover edge allowed Georgia to come back and almost win, gave up over 500 yards defensively, and then the very next week they gave up 40 points to Vanderbilt and over 400 yards in that game. And even last week against South Carolina, three touchdown favorite again, they were narrowly escaped with a two-point win. Central Fl- uh, The uh, South Florida game back in week two also not quite as impressive as that blowout margin. So Bama has been very mediocre at times this season, and Tennessee's been an explosive team. They got off to the perfect 4-0 straight-up ATS start. Of course, we had a best bet on them in Week 3 when they won 71 nothing over Kent State, just part of my number one ranked college football season so far at wagertalk.com. But they came back down to earth after the Oklahoma win. They lost to a very good and dangerous Arkansas team, by the way, uh, which I do rate as a top 25, even though they're a little bit outside. If they beat LSU this week, they will be ranked in the top 25. Last week against Florida, not a great showing there. They've only scored 23 and 14 the last two weeks. But I think there was also a huge look ahead to this Alabama game. Also, but a little bit of a flat spot after that loss. They come focused this week. This is still an explosive offensive team. And Heupel and company still the best first half team in college football the last four years against the spread, hitting over 65% on first half lines. You could look at the first half here, but I like that plus three. It's such a key number. I do think there's some line value here. And Tennessee's still averaging over 42 points a game, six and a half yards per play. Should be able to move the ball in this game. And defensively, they do have the edge here. I know Alabama actually has better offensive numbers, yards per play, but Tennessee has the better defensive numbers. Four yards per play allowed this season. Bama gives up 4.6. Tennessee's allowing just 10.5 points a game. Now, I realize this is a huge step up in class against Bama, but at home, getting three, that's where the value is. I lean Tennessee in this game on Saturday afternoon. Hey, comment below. I read all the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this game and the other games we're covering, where you agree or disagree with the database, with the projections. Always love to hear from you. I do read the comments, and I reply back. All right, let's get right at it to the next game on the board here. This one not quite as big. Number 24, Michigan at number 22, Illinois, also at 3.30 Eastern. This one on CBS. Uh, But this is a loser not to leave the national title picture, but it is a loser leave the top 25 rankings matchup with number 24, Michigan, number 22, Illinois. And Illinois came very close to leaving the rankings last week. They were a 22.5 point favorite, and they were lucky to escape with a one-point win against a bad Purdue team, 50-49 to in overtime. In fact, Purdue went for the two-point conversion in the overtime after scoring. Had they gotten that, they would have pulled the outright upset. 
Regardless, not a good showing by Illinois last week. Their defense was exposed. They gave up over 500 yards to a really bad Purdue offense that had struggled all season. Maybe that was the breakout game for Purdue. We'll have to wait and see. But you do have to worry about a little bit of a hangover. I know they won the game, but when you have a high score and overtime game, it does linger. It does fatigue you. And it's probably not a great spot for Illinois for that reason. The initial line on this game was one and a half, two. The sharp money has come in on Michigan, pushing it up to three and a half. Even saw some fours start to pop this week as well. Yet the public looks like they're leaning a little bit towards the ranked home underdog, as they often do towards Illinois. So I do think we have a bit of a sharp square divide here with the sharp money on Michigan. Problem is, though, there's just no line value left. My projection in this game, my 10,000 game simulation projection, has Michigan winning by one and a half. That's exactly where the opening line was at many sports books. And now, as I mentioned, it's gone to three and a half, even four in a lot of spots now as we get closer to the weekend. So the line value is gone, even though the situational setup probably did favor Michigan. So let's look at the total instead. I actually think the over has some value in this game, over 44 and a half. And there's a few reasons why. Now, I know Michigan not a great offensive team, and they are a strong defense once again this year. But that's exactly why this total is as low as it is. And that's what's keeping it in the low 40 range. As I just mentioned, uh, Purdue, Illinois, scored 99 points with overtime last week. It was 86 in regulation. And that was against a terrible Purdue offense that is worse than Michigan. So I do have some concern with this Illinois defense this week. And the other thing about the Michigan matchup that favors the Wolverines is the fact they run the ball extremely well. They do not throw the ball well. That's their problem offensively this year. But they can run the ball. In fact, they've had 155 rushing yards or more in each of their past four games, 148 or more in five of the six this year, including 290 and 301 a few weeks ago against USC and Arkansas State. And if you look at this Illinois defense this year, uh, the Illinois defense has been stronger against the pass than they have against the run. They've given up over 150 rushing yards a game, over four and a half yards per carry. So Michigan should be able to move the ball on the ground. Meanwhile, Illinois should have some success throwing the ball. Illinois does not run the ball well, but they do throw the ball extremely well this season. Eight and a half yards per pass, 67% completions. And the Michigan pass defense is solid. Uh, but I think this is a step up here against a pretty good Illinois passing attack. So I look for the strengths of both offenses to work. Illinois throwing and definitely Michigan running the ball. I think over the total makes some sense here. Over the 44 and a half at 330 Eastern between Michigan and Illinois. All right, one more true top 25 matchup. Then I'm going to get to that bonus game for you as well. This one is the biggest game of the week. It's a huge matchup, a top 10 matchup. And that is number five, Georgia. At number one, Texas, 7.30 Eastern Saturday night on ABC National TV. And this very well could be a loser-leave-town match as well for Georgia if they pick up their second loss. Um, however, Texas is in pretty good spot even if they drop this game, but I don't think they will. Texas is the best team in the country. That's why they're ranked number one, and I agree. In fact, the look-ahead line this summer at Circa was Georgia minus two. Now Georgia's getting four and a half to five points. So you might say, well, this line's inflated. But it really isn't because if you look at the results on the field this season, the line should be even higher. In fact, my database simulation projects exactly that. Has Texas winning by over 12 points on average? Now, that seems high even to me, but it shows how much better Texas has been overall this season. A couple concerns, of course, is that Texas is stepping up in class. They've played a much weaker schedule than Georgia so far this season. I get that. But still, they've been the better team on the field. They've been the much better defensive team, even when factoring in the weaker schedule played. Texas on the season has given up just six points a game, just 3.7 yards per play. Those are Georgia-type defensive numbers from years past. Georgia, meanwhile, giving up 17 points, 5.2 yards per play against teams that average 6.1. Texas is averaging 7.7 yards per play. So Texas should have success moving the ball here. And we have seen this Georgia defense look very mediocre at times. They gave up over 500 yards in that Alabama game, of course. They were down big early in that game, made the monster comeback, came up a bit short. But they also struggled last week against Mississippi State, giving up 31 points. In fact, they gave up over 300 passing yards in that game. And to put that in perspective, Texas also played Mississippi State just a few weeks ago at the end of September, and they held them to just 144 passing yards, beat them by 22 points. These teams also both played Alabama last year. Uh, Texas, of course, won that game a year ago, September, by 10 outright as a seven-point road dog. And then Georgia, of course, picked up that loss in the uh, title game, the championship, a uh, conference championship game last December as a five and a half point favorite. And it kept him out of the national title picture. Starting to feel like these two teams are kind of heading in opposite directions. Texas is becoming the power now. Georgia may be coming back down to earth a bit. 
We'll see. But once again, my simulation has Texas winning by 12. And I do think they're probably the best team in the country right now. Always scary to go against a team like Georgia catching points. I get that. Uh, but this line actually might still be a little bit lower than it should be at minus four and a half. All right, those are your three true top 25 matchups for this Saturday, October the 19th, Week 8 college football. Going to get to a bonus game here on the way out. Again, that was just a bit outside for making the top 25, so a fourth bonus game in a moment. But quick, I want to let you know, these free plays are great throughout the week on videos. And by the way, I do a ton of solo standalone college and pro football game videos. Also baseball, and then of course basketball starts next week. So make sure you click subscribe and you hit the bell as well here on Wager Talk TV so you never miss out on this great content when it goes up including this top 25 video every week. And of course, my NFL Fade the Public video for this weekend is will be, will be available soon. So click that bell for an instant alert so you never miss out. Thumbs up like. If you're liking the free play videos, I will keep them coming. But do me a couple favors. First of all, click that thumbs up like button right now. Boom. You did it. Thank you. And also comment below. I truly do read all the comments and reply back. Where do you agree or disagree with the database simulation this week? How are you playing these top 25 matchups? What other college football plays do you like? Any under-the-radar small college games? Include those as well. Let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV because I do read the comments and I reply back. If you're serious about winning long-term, though, you really have to make sure you get my personal best bets each and every day. And they've been just fantastic this year. And it's not a surprise. I've been doing this now for 29 seasons as a full-time professional handicapper. And as I get more beautiful with age, comment below on that one, by the way, but I'm also getting even sharper as a handicapper. And this year is just a perfect example. As I do this video heading into the week, and we're on an eight and one run over the past week on best bets. Yeah, I'm very selective. Maybe one to two plays a day during the week at most, three to four on a Saturday or on a Sunday. The point is I average about two to three games a day throughout the season, all sports, but that selectivity pays off because you only get the strongest of the strongest best bets. And the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the profits, I should say. Already this calendar year, 2024, we're ranked number one in all of football, baseball, MLB, basketball all time, and this year all sports number one up over 170 units, and there's still two and a half months to go this calendar year. How would you like to get it for free? Well, you can this week when you sign up for 2025. I'll include the rest of this year, the next two and a half months, for free. It is a fantastic offer, and it also makes you take a consistent, true investment approach each and every day, which is what I preach. So why sit back on the sidelines anymore and watch winter after winter pass you by? I know many of you have watched this video every week this season. This is now week eight of college football. And you keep thinking, well, I'll wait for Steve to have an off week and I'll jump in. We're 10-3 and three over the past month in college football best bets. We're number one this year. We just went 8-1 and one over the past week, all sports, baseball, and football. Don't try to time the market. We're not going to win every week, but we're going to win more than we lose. And that's been proven with my long-term success including the 170 units of profit already in 2024. And that's just nine and a half months in. Get the next two and a half months for free when you sign up for 2025. And I'm including an additional $200 discount on next year's price. And you get the next two and a half months for free. This is the best offer for long-term investors I've ever made. Don't delay. It's this weekend only. It's available right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Now, if you want a smaller package, you want football only, I personally say play everything. MLB number one this season. We finished the regular season 31-13 and 13 run. We're winning the playoffs as well. Football number one this season. Basketball starts next week. I'm number one the last three years in the NBA combined and number one all time in units. One of the history of wager talk in the NBA. and was number one in college a couple years ago as well. So you really shouldn't pick and choose. That's my personal preference. But if you want a football only, I get it. Nothing wrong with that. You'll still make money. I do have the rest of the college season for $2.99 or the NFL season for $3.99, but you got to have special promo codes for those, and they're available on my page only right now. So go check out not only the best bets, but I put a daily free play up throughout the week. Check out the bonus free play on my page every day. See what best bets are available. You can also see a recap of the last 20 best bets every day recapped at the bottom with analysis, and also see those promo codes, including the buy 25, get the rest of 2024 free offer, for this week only, and also those promo codes for college and pro football if you're a football-only guy. Hey, look, guy or girl, we get a ton of ladies out there, too. I really do appreciate the support. Guys and girls, go to wagertalk.com right now, and let's start winning together. I've won consistently now for 29 straight seasons. Don't forget also to follow me on Instagram and X. Do more free play videos on Instagram, too, so let's keep that going. And if you're not subscribed there, definitely subscribe to my IG channel. We're going to get more active here with basketball picking up. You can follow me on X and Instagram at Steve Merrill, 2Rs, 1L. At Steve Merrill, 2Rs, 1L on X and Instagram. Head fake.
Just realized I forgot to give you that bonus top 25, top 30 matchup, if you will, before we get to all that other great content here on Wager Talk TV. And that is number 27, Nebraska, at number 16, Indiana. And the reason this just missed the cut is Nebraska is second in additional votes in the AP poll, but they're actually 25th in the coaches poll. So depending on which poll you're looking at, this is another top 25 matchup. So I wanted to give it to you on the way out here as a little bonus content. Once again, Nebraska at Indiana. That, by the way, is at 12 noon Eastern on Fox. It's the last game on the betting rotation. If you look at the Wager Talk Live odd screen, it's at the very bottom, but it's a noon Eastern kickoff. They moved it up for national TV because it is a huge game in the Big Ten between two teams playing a lot better than expected so far this season. Indiana especially, a perfect 6-0 start, 5-1 against the spread. Nebraska, meanwhile, 5-1 straight up. 4-1 Four and one against the number. They both have been two of the most profitable teams in college football, both money line and point spread this season. So let's look at my database simulation. Ten thousand games simulated. On average, I've got Indiana winning this game by nine and a half points. So there is value at the current line of minus six and a half or less. A lot of books have gone to six and a half minus fifteen. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some sevens out there as we get closer to this early kickoff on Saturday. The over-under has been jumping around, too. Opened around 51-ish, dropped to 49.5, went back to 50. It's been jumping all week. But we did see some early sharp money come in on Indiana. Last week, a look-ahead line was 3.5. The both books opened around 5, 5.5 this past weekend, and now it's 6.5, closer to to 7 in some spots. But I make it 9.5, so I agree with the sharp money coming in on Indiana. And I also like the matchup here for the Hoosiers for a couple reasons. Um, First of all, big step up in class really for both teams against the opposing defenses. Uh, Nebraska has been a strong defense this year, to say the least. 11 points per game, 4.4 yards per play allowed. But their offense is struggling. They're averaging 5.8 yards per play against teams that allow 6.3. They're now taking on an Indiana defense that's given up just 4.4 yards per play. So I do think Nebraska is going to struggle to move the ball in this game. And Indiana has the much more explosive offense, averaging 7.5 yards per play, over 47 points a game. They're throwing for 11 yards per pass attempt. Every time they drop back 28 times per game, they're averaging a first down. Really incredible stuff um, for this uh, Indiana passing attack. Now, Nebraska throws the ball pretty well also, 8.1 yards per pass. But keep in mind, they face some really weak defenses that give up 7.9. Yes, Indiana's faced some weak defenses as well, but that 11 yards per pass, pretty impressive no matter who you've played. I think the home team has the edge here. And once again, I simulate a nine and a half point win. So I'd look at Indiana minus the six and a half or less in this early kickoff, 12 noon Eastern on Fox. Almost forgot to give you that just a bit outside bonus game here. I got so excited about the 170 units we've won so far. I got so excited about the buy next year, get the rest of this year free offer that I almost forgot to give you that fourth bonus game. But we didn't. We got it in here. Now stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for more great free content coming up next.